Well, hello there. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to share. You're welcome to like. You're welcome to subscribe. And you're welcome, if you don't like it, to put the thumbs down button. But anyway, I was asked by TT, those are his initials, to talk about the relationship between Jamaica and China. And he wanted to know whether or not I thought it was a good relationship or had a positive relationship. Well, personally, um, when you think about China, you have to think that China is a business country. Um, and anything they invest in, they invest in it for a reason. They don't, they're not just going to spend billions and billions of pounds and not expect to get anything out of it. So it must benefit them as well as hopefully have a mutual benefit for Jamaica. Now, um, we have to ask ourselves, why is America so concerned about the relationship with Jamaica and China? Basically, um, we have to wonder whether this is a paternal arm or paternal protection that America is showing, or whether they're worried that they might lose control if China has too large an investment in Jamaica. And in that way, they can't control Jamaica as they would like. But you have to remember, the thing with um, America is that, you know, you end up getting this, um, if you're a good person, if you're good, we'll give you this. If you're bad, we're going to take it back. Like they withdrew aid. And it's like when Jamaica went independent. It's the same kind of thing. USA and UK, they withdrew aid. So do you really want that kind of relationship where you have to be, where you're totally in control and you have to do what Papa says? Papa meaning the US of A. So it all depends who you feel safer with, really. That's what I would say. Who does Jamaica feel safe with? Does it, does it really matter whether or not they're controlled? Do, are they, do they mind being controlled? Do they mind the fact that their, contra their local contractors are not um, being um, involved in the work? I think that is a bit, um, I think it's a bit unfair that um, China has totally a Chinese workforce. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't. Maybe there are some people, some Jamaicans, indigenous Jamaicans working with them. I don't know. But the, feel, the, the feedback I've heard is like, you know, because they're in there and they, and they take and they're using their own people, a lot of local contractors are losing out of work and are becoming unemployed. So it might be a better relationship if China does employ more indigenous Jamaicans in their projects. And that might reduce some of the, um, the hostility or whatever you want to call it. Um, US has been worried about China's influence. Um, Trump has been warning countries to stay clear of China's engagement. And like we said, you know, China's got money everywhere and they're very influential, and especially with this Belt and Road Initiative that is in, a Car in the Caribbean, it's in the Asia, it's in Latin America, and it's linking a lot of roads for a trade project. So there's that. Um, China has put more concrete and asphalt in the country. Um, Ambassador Ward complained values and the fact that China was enjoying an unfair advantage, i.e. using their own contractors. I'm just pointing out the things that they, they seem to be concerned about. I was watching a video and um, they reckon the Americans, do they have a right to infringe on Jamaica's sovereignty? Um, Jamaica has a right to determine which country it partners with as a sovereignty. So they cannot allow the USA to dictate to Jamaica. Um, Ambassador Ward, he was saying Jamaica needs to be wary of Greeks bearing gifts. Um, Chinese investment has carried with them dis with disregard for local contractors. Um, 20, uh, I, th I think they must have given them 21 million or something and they don't know what the revenue component is. Um, with regard to America, there's no moral authority to impose um, anything on Jamaica politics. So, I mean, you know, to be honest, if it was my, in my own personal opinion, I kind of think, well, 
if if it's affecting indigenous Jamaicans, then it can't be good. Everybody needs to benefit. There has to be mutual benefit. But that should have been discussed at the offset. That, that can't be discussed after all the money's been handed over and now um, China is in there doing their thing. You can't halfway through now say, oh, you know, our contractors are not getting any work. Because what would happen is when they were doing, when they were... Um, when China was investing in that in that project, whether it's the Belt and Road Initiative, whether it's whatever it is, Jamaica um, government should have been saying, "So, um, who who in our who in of our people are you going to be using? Are you going to be creating jobs for Indigenous Jamaicans?" They should have sorted that out up front. If that is going to be a problem now, it's no point. Um, closing the gate after the horse is bolted, which is basically what seems to have happened here. Um, so, athletes, let me see what this is. So, Jamaica 7. Jamaica, um, China's got this Jamaica China technical training program. It's supposed to be the largest bilateral sports agreement between Jamaica and China, and it involves 138 athletes. Um, for each year of, yeah, for each year of the of the China funded program, because it's a three year program, 138 Jamaican athletes, managers, and coaches from several disciplines travel to China for two months of intensive training. And so, um, and when you think China is one of the top five of the volleyball, um, you know, in in the world. And Jamaica is given, being given that opportunity. They are um, benefiting from that. So you have to kind of think to yourself, well, if that is the case, um, those, in, those, those are indigenous Jamaicans, but they are actually doing that in China. They're taking them over to China. They're paying for their fares. They're doing all their intensive training. And I think there is some kind of proviso that for three years they have to do something in Jamaica. But, you know, that is where um, indigenous Jamaicans are benefiting. So you have to ask yourself, you know, who is benefiting? Um, why are they benefiting if it's important? Who do you want to benefit by having um, Chinese heavily invested in Jamaica? And you have to ask, what has America got to offer? Um, Jamaica has who who can offer you more? How, what's the what is the who, who how who would help you to benefit more than America or China? Um, like I said, China's invested billions all around the world, and yeah, people are scared of China. It's one of the richest now continents in the world, so people are petrified of China having all this control. We don't know what's behind it, you know. Or we, as as individuals, you have to ask yourself: What is the country benefiting? How is it benefiting? And is there a way for it to have mutual benefits so that you know we're not um, worried about the workforce? We're not worried about unemployment. We don't get resentful when Chinese um, only use their own workers. You know, so that kind, those kind of talks need to be there. But I've got a funny feeling they should have been in place before um, when the agreement was signed. I don't know if it's too late to do that. But apart from that, those are my thoughts and I hope they're useful. Bye bye.